In today's lesson, we are going to be actually jumping onto the iPad and taking a look at GoodNotes. Hi friends, it's Mary. Thank you so much for joining me today for lesson three of getting started with digital planning. You can see the other two lessons if you click the links in the description box below so that you can get caught up to speed on what you need to get started with digital planning. In today's lesson, we are going to be actually jumping onto the iPad and taking a look at GoodNotes. GoodNotes is the program that I chose to cover in this course because to me it gives the best simulation of paper planning and sort of being able to use all the stickers and embellishments and handwriting and all of those great things in a digital environment. So if you haven't already, be sure to purchase the GoodNotes app from the iPad store and download it onto your iPad now. Let's get started with our overview of GoodNotes. I'm going to start this course with an assumption that you know the basics of um, installing GoodNotes and getting it set up for yourself. If you are struggling with that in any way, I will leave help topics from GoodNotes in the comments below so that you can get that set up and get to this point. You can either download your digital file, your PDF planner that you've purchased or that you've gotten for free, either directly to your iPad or you can download it on your computer or your iPhone and import it over to your iPad. If you are importing over from another device, you will often get the question, where do you want to import it? On my iPad, there are a lot of options because there are a lot of options that can handle PDFs. Um, you can choose import into GoodNotes, so you don't even have to go look for it later. And then once that's complete, it will ask you where you want to import that. Do you want to import it into a file that you may have open or a new file? And I would suggest putting that in a new file. So that is what I've done with the BrookBot Bujanichi here. I do want you to know um, Brooke from BrookBot has been so gracious to send me this copy for free to use as part of this course. I wanted to have a planner to show you all one that could be purchased and actually this has a free version as well that you can use to try out digital planning. So that is a great bonus. I will leave the information on how to get a free version in the description box below so that you can try it out and then see if you want to purchase the entire version. I did get this copy for free, but I'm not being compensated to include it in my course in any way. So once it is in here, you're just going to click on the title page and you can actually, when we get into embellishments, I'll show you how to, you can make your own personal cover to show up on that page. And we're just gonna go over this top row of information right here. So right here in the upper left-hand corner, you are going to see an arrow and this allows you to go back to the back screen. The next icon here, if you click it, it allows you to move the pages and add pages and edit pages and things like that. Um, it also allows you to quickly scan and see where you're at in your planner. As you see, this whole planner has over 394 pages. So if you were trying to move to a section quickly, um, you can kind of see where you're at. You can also, make bookmarks for yourself, which is something great that I do. Um, and so it's gonna put a bookmark on whatever page you're on and you just put a name there. And I don't think I've ever really used, okay. So um, actually the Bujanichi is really well set out with these um, PDF outlines already set up for you, that's great. So if I click on May, it's gonna take me directly to May. That's really cool, I hadn't actually noticed that on the other BookBot planner that I reviewed. So, and then if you're in the thumbnails, you can hit, click edit and you can just kind of move them around if you want to. Um, I'm actually gonna move that back because I don't wanna move it around. But if you wanted to, especially as you're adding pages, um, that is something great to know. And this is also where you can trash pages if you want to. You can click select as many as you want to and hit trash. You can also export or print. And this section right here is how you can add things to your planner. This image is going to add a small image that you can resize and crop down and put around um, that will go over more in the embellishments area. A text box, which is where you can sort of type in text and not really write it out. Again, we'll go over that a little bit more in the embellishments area. A bookmark, which we just talked about. Um, an easy way to find something that you're looking for with a name. Add a page, ab add a page above or add a page below. That's when you want to add an, you know, an entire page of something and then import above and below, and that's when you want to add more like a file. This button here allows you to draw things that become shapes. 
So this is very handy sometimes with digital planning. So if you have that selected and you try to draw a circle, it makes it look like a perfect circle, which is great. Um, a triangle, um, I love it with lines. That's probably my favorite thing to use it with. Um, there you go. So that's uh, what I use that option with. But you have to be very careful. If you're trying to write words and you accidentally have that selected, you're going to think that like your iPad is completely messed up and that's not that's not it at all. This option here allows you to write in a smaller area. Um, it's kind of hard to describe, but this is great if you are using an iPad that is not an iPad Pro um, that doesn't have the palm rejection. So this area, this gray area here, whew, is going to have palm rejection. So if you're writing with a, another stylus, that is an option there. Um, I like this, especially when I'm taking notes. And you see it uh, up here, right there, you see that little box? Um, that shows you what area you're writing in. And then um, another good thing to remember is that because you're so concentrated in, you want it to be um, a smaller sized pen. And you can actually set this um, to auto advance, which I don't think I have, set. yeah. I don't have that set right now, but if you have auto advanced set and you start writing at the end of your area here, you can go ahead and it will advance for you, which is a nice feature. The only problem I've had, which maybe someone can let me know in the comments below if you've figured out a way to solve this problem, is if I'm here at the end of my page and I start writing, it starts down there, which is great, but a lot of times the gap is way too big if I'm taking notes. All right, so right here is your pen. And this is where you are going to be able to set the color. You're going to be able to set the size. And it does have presets that you can add to if you want to. So if you want to add anything to your presets, you just hit edit, hit this plus sign, and you can pick any of these colors that you want. Um, and then it adds it down here. And you can also do preset um, sizes. And so you can do that. And then when you're done, you just make sure you hit done. And that makes it really easy if you are using a color or a size in your planner and you know that it's a great fit, make sure you add that to your defaults. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, your presets. And then you can go over to custom at any time and just sort of play around with that and use the slider to go bigger or smaller and one of the colors. This is the um, highlighter. <laughs> and so let's make it yellow right now. And so you can easily highlight and you can also make it big. Same with this, you can pick custom colors using the edit and the custom area. They're just slightly lighter than the other ones. And you can just sort of highlight it however you want to. This is another area where I use this shapes button, this shapes button right here, because it makes it um, a little straighter. You all have probably already seen me use this eraser. Um, so if you click on it, you get options of sizes and with settings um, you can choose whether to erase the entire stroke or not um, it is not going to erase what's in the PDF that is more like an image something you're not going to erase but it will erase what's on top that you have um, included over here you're going to find the lasso I, uh, I guess we can lasso these so if you want to move a big area of things that you have added, embellishments or, or writing. You just lasso it and you can move it around. Um, now you do have to be careful because if you, let me see here, say you just highlight part of what you wanted to do and not the whole thing. Like if I wanted that arrow to go with me, you're gonna see it only took what it was touching. So the highlighted part, um, you'll find this with some words. If you are in a big mess of words and you're trying to um, lasso, you want to be really sure to get the top of the T, the dot in the I, stuff like that. Um, if you select the lasso tool, you'll see that you can choose what it lassos. This is great when you are embellishing your planner. So um, you can have the handwriting, images, text boxes, or everything. Um, so a lot of times if I've been working on adding some embellishments or something in their images, I will make sure that only images is selected so that all of the writing that I've added or vice versa um, doesn't move as well. This button here um, allows you to 
use your pencil or your stylus as a um, as sort of a mouse. So this allows you to use the hyperlinks, which um, not every planner has hyperlinks or anything like that. Um, a lot of the really good ones do that may allow you to use that allow you to work quickly within the planner. So you'll have to have that selected. I had a I was working with hyperlinks when I first started digital planning. And I was like, why won't these work? I just kept clicking on them. Like you can see, I just kept clicking on them and clicking on them. And oh, they look like they should work, but they don't work. It's because I didn't have this selected. It thinks I'm just trying to embellish and things like that. So if I wanted to go down to May, click on that, there's May. And if I wanted to go to April, June, um, like I said, the really good planners are all hyperlinked and the BrookBot planners are the best I've seen with the hyperlinks and things like that. This button here, one of the most useful in good notes, one of the reasons I love digital planning, you just hit it and it undoes, undoes, is that a word? Undo, undoes, I guess, right? Um, it just erases what you just did. And if you did it by mistake, you can press this button right here and it will redo what you just undid, which is nice. This is sort of your menu button. So you can clear page, export, print, search. The search, um, I believe, is supposed to do handwriting as well. I wouldn't depend on it, but it's a great option when you're looking for something. Smart Stylus, um, which allows you to put settings for your stylus that you're using. You can use other styluses with GoodNotes. So especially if you don't have an iPad Pro, you can use another smart stylus with it um, and you'll set up the settings in, in that option. More options, which is your writing template and writing posture. Honestly, this is an area that I don't go into too often, but it's nice to have. The only other thing that I think I might add is to share with you about paper templates. So if you are, for example, adding a page below, you will see that there are a lot of paper templates. Um, the yellowish ones are ones that were included in GoodNotes and the other ones that you see are ones that I have found online and added or I've scanned or that I've created. And the one thing that I did do is I did create one that is just a blank page. I got a just a blank screen image that I could do, made sure it fit around um, the size that I wanted. So um, you can do this a variety of ways, but this is how I did it. And you can even add pages of different sizes within your planner. For example, you see the BrookBot planner is perfectly designed for the iPad, so it fits it perfectly. Um, but I have this page in here that I used that is more like um, an eight by 10 or an eight by 11. I used that with the Happy Planner that I scanned before. Um, so let's just add that in and you'll see that it looks completely different but it's in the same planner. So that's really nice as well if you have a different page setup that you need or something like that. You can add covers. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the covers that come with it. I think you can probably add some more, but um, you can add a cover without ever dealing with the Good Notes covers. Again, we'll cover that in the um, embellishments section of this course. So if you go down here in the right-hand corner in Options, Template Library, um, papers, then you can add a template and you can also um, rearrange them, which is nice. So you can put the ones that you use the most at the top and you can delete them, things like that. Um, so you just hit a plus here and put where you wanted it to come from. So Dropbox, your, uh, I use a lot from my photos, that sort of thing, whatever is just easiest. I use this as like a working iPad. So I personally don't keep a lot of personal photos in there. I keep it on my iPhone, but, um, I do keep like the files that I'm using for planning and other things in there. So you can just add that in and that's how I added those other pages. And that makes it very easy to continue to add pages to your planner as you work in it. So there you have it. That is an overview of GoodNotes and how to use it. My next lesson will be covering setting up your digital planner in GoodNotes and getting started with digital planning. Be sure to hit that subscribe button so that you will know when the next lesson is released. If you are enjoying this course, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up and please be sure to share with your friends so that they can take part in this course while it is available here free on YouTube. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a blessed day.